introducing the most advanced iPhone yet. Because after a year of innovation, we like to release things that are better instead of worse. No way, the best one yet. <laughs> but here's the crazy part. It's exactly the same as last year's, but with a different camera. Yes! Yes! <laughs> and for just a little bit more money than a luxury sports car, you can get the Pro model. It's very pro. The Pro is short for uh, profit for us. Yes! Oh, yeah! Woohoo! Yeah! Whoa. Oh, yeah! That is all. Thank you for attending this year's Apple event. See you all next year. Now, all joking aside, I had to do a video about the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro. This is not going to be a traditional iPhone or tech review because I have not been up to speed with the smartphone market at all. In fact, I'm upgrading from an iPhone SE. So this phone is a whole lot different than this phone. This thing is pretty darn ancient. Now I have taken care of it. I have a ding here and the messed up screen is actually just a screen protector. So this thing's about four years old and I have taken very good care of it. But I wanna to talk to you guys about why I decided to upgrade and if this phone is meeting my specific needs. So to give a little bit of a background about who I am and what I need, I don't really do tech reviews. If you haven't seen my videos, I do mainly software development, business development, personal branding, app development, and stuff like that. So I was primarily looking at the iPhone 11 to use as my main camera, which by the way, this right here being recorded, this is on the iPhone 11, and I'm holding the iPhone 11 Pro with the three lenses. So I have been doing all of my recording on a Canon 70D, which has been a great camera, and I still intend on using it for various things. But there are some limitations that this camera has introduced that have been irritating to me. So first off, I gotta worry about battery all the time. This thing doesn't last very long. I even have two of them and I have to charge them all of the time and switch between the two when I have a long day of recording. The next thing is storage. Yeah, oh, I don't even have an SD card in there. See, this is what I'm talking about. I, I don't know where my SD card is. <laughs> I don't wanna have to worry about SD cards. Yes, I could go buy a really large SD card or buy a couple of them, but then I just have to worry about losing it, breaking it, or having my files split up across multiple SD cards. I was really looking for an all-in-one solution and with the 512 gigabytes on the iPhone 11 Pro, I can record pretty much as long as I want and then just airdrop those files to my computer and start editing. Makes my life a whole lot easier and I don't have to worry about SD cards getting eaten, which by the way, my dog ate my last SD card. So I had to buy a new one, which is currently somewhere in this house. And it just makes my life easier. So that was one of the big things. I didn't wanna to have to worry about batteries or SD cards. The other thing is that this thing has a limitation of 30 minute videos, which seems like a long time, but if I'm doing a long video of software development and I want to show my face, I can easily hit that 30 minute mark. Plus, if your video files are over four gigabytes, this thing will automatically split them up into multiple files, which means you're pretty much always going to have to work with multiple files. With the iPhone, I can record one solid file for an hour, two hours. I haven't hit a limit yet, so I really don't know if there is one, but I can pretty much not have to worry about it. This thing does 1080p 30 frames per second. The iPhone does up to 60 frames per second at 4K, but this iPhone does not have a flipping screen. So this makes it a lot easier to shoot yourself. <laughs> That's not what I want to say. Jeez. This makes it a lot easier to record videos of yourself. And yeah, right now I'm pretty limited to the front facing camera because I want to make sure I'm in frame and that it's still recording. Now I know people are going to say there are other cameras out there that don't have these limitations. And I know that's the case, but I also needed a new phone. So I was thinking maybe I can hit two birds with one stone and also not have to worry about camera equipment, just have a phone for pretty much everything. Now the microphone I'm using is a Video Mic Pro. Yes, a Rode Video Mic Pro, and it goes directly into the camera as long as you have a converter. Where did it go? So this will be the end of the cable, a headphone jack that'll go into a converter, which will go into the lightning port. Or is it lightning? Yes, it might sound like I'm complaining about every little thing, but when you're producing a lot of videos, sometimes one, two, or three videos in one day, 
it can be a lot of extra work to sync audio or to go and post and try to make the video look nice, which I always have to do with this thing. The iPhone just comes pre good looking and it just saves me a ton of time. One of the main reasons I've been hesitant to switch to a smartphone for my main recording device is the lack of optical zoom. Yes, you can zoom in and crop that video file to fit the screen, but that's all digital zoom and it makes the video look terrible. But with the iPhone 11 Pro, you get the two times optical zoom as well as the wide angle. So you get a little bit more options, which makes recording a little bit easier. Now, if you're considering getting one of these and you already have an eight, a 10 or a 10 S, maybe it's not worth upgrading because the additions are not that much. The main thing is the new wide angle camera. So if that is an absolute must for you, then go for it. Now, if you're wondering if you should get the Pro or just the 11, well, there's not a lot of reasons to upgrade to the Pro. It's a lot more money for just a couple of different things. The main one is the lens. You get the two times optical lens. So if that's a must, then you might as well get the Pro. But the other things are less important. One thing is you get the fast charge plug-in, which is nice, but the phones charge pretty fast anyways, so maybe you can just wait a little bit longer and it'll be fine. The other things deal with the display, and honestly, my wife has the iPhone 11, which is what I'm shooting on right now, and looking at the displays, I cannot tell the difference. Maybe that's just because I haven't been accustomed to one to be able to, to see that, but I think the majority of people are not going to notice the difference. So unless there's a very specific reason you need the higher resolution and the contrast, then I would probably say the 11 is just fine. But if you're doing screen recording on your phone, you probably want that higher resolution video file. So I would go for the Pro. And there's like one extra battery hour in the Pro version, which is nice, but it's not that significant. Now there is one really big difference between the 11 and the 11 Pro, and that is cost. This thing costed me $13.50 plus tax. Extremely expensive. This is almost twice the cost of the iPhone 11 with 128 gigabytes. Yes, this thing has 512, but I would say for the majority of people, 128 is going to do just fine. For my specific needs, the 512 is nice because I just want to be able to record as long as I want and not have to think about it. I'm basically paying extra to not have to think about the storage. One other thing is the size differences. So this is the 11 Pro, it's the smallest. Then we have the 11, and then we have the 11 Pro Max, which is the largest. So that 11 is kind of like a middle ground, which would probably be good for most people. But again, I came from this little tiny thing. So this thing felt like a tablet. Maybe I'll adjust to it over time, but this is plenty big for me and I would not want to go even larger to the 11. So overall, I think I could have gotten by just fine with the 11 and you know, maybe that's something I should have done, but I'm not going to regret my purchase decision because I'll probably try to make this thing last numerous years and I will get as much value from it as I possibly can. So is the phone complete garbage? I would say no. It serves my purpose, especially working with my Apple laptop. It's very nice to use AirDrop and everything like that. But I think the 11 would probably be more bang for your buck. My personal opinion, I know everyone's gonna argue with me in the comments, I don't really care. My main thing is I needed a device to make my life easier and the iPhone 11 Pro is doing the job pretty well. So I'm happy with my purchase and I think it was good. So let me know what you guys think and also what you thought of this video because I usually don't do videos like this, but so many people talking trash as well as so many people liking the iPhone 11s, I couldn't help but throw a video out there from my perspective. So thank you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Also, for those of you who are curious, a little bit more on my video recording setup, this has been tremendously helpful. This is a flexible tripod and this is a clip from my phone so I can pretty much go in any angle and any position that I want just by loosening this and bending that. So that's nice, but I also use a full tripod right here. And again, I mentioned I use the, the main microphone that I have right here, but I also have this one for when I'm doing on-screen recording. So I'll usually just do both just in case one of them messes up, which tends to happen on occasion. And in case you guys are wondering the optical zoom, this is one times and that is two times. And then back to wide angle. So yeah, it's pretty awesome, honestly.